Guys, it's episode four of the XFL Extra Point Podcast. I'm Justin. I'm here with Thomas. Thomas, say something so people know you exist. NFL refs are horrible and should all be fired. Oh, yeah. I didn't really watch the Browns. You guys, you guys won this week. That's not why. I was talking more about the Lions game than anything. Oh, I Browns won, but we lucked the fuck out, so whatever. So once again, we're recording this on a Sunday. This is, We're recording this prior to the Vikings game in which we saw uh, the Vikings win. Kirk Cousins threw for 700 yards and Dalvin Cush rushed for 303 touchdowns. Did you say it was a Dalvin good win Cush? for the Vikings. Dalvin I'm, Cush. I'm 3,000% <laughs> sure you said Dalvin Cush. I might have, but uh, Dalvin <laughs> Cook, the cookie monster, the chef. The chef. Okay, well, we'll move on. We've got a lot to talk about today. Um, so I can actually say that again because we do have a lot to talk about today. Lots of news this week, so we're going to do our news and notes. Uh, we also are going to have a little bit of a rules discussion, you know. Uh, the rule book, we don't know if they'll be formally releasing it, but a lot of these rules are out there, so we want to talk about it. Um, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, at XFL Extra Point. Uh, last week, you guys might have listened to uh, the interview that we released on, what, Thursday? Was it on Thursday? Uh, I believe so. Going? So we released an interview with uh, Tawan Jones on Thursday that uh, XFL Down Under, at XFL Down Under Twitter, gave to us. So make sure you guys check that out if you haven't. But anyway, let's get into today's show, and it's time for the news drop. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I'll write it, and we'll do it live! So the first story we're going to talk about today was the story that kind of... It was probably the biggest story from last week, and it was the Bob Stoops FSU rumors. Did, did Did you see any of that discourse on Twitter, Thomas? I did, actually. So yeah, lots of people were salty about that. Yeah, for some reason. I don't know yeah. why I'm so mad. So, um, on Monday, rumors came out that uh, the current Dallas Renegades head coach and GM, Bob Stoops, could be the new head football coach for FSU, Florida State, uh, because they recently released their head coach, Willie Taggart. Is that how you say his name? That is correct. Willie Taggart. Um, so, the reports were saying that he was one of a few candidates that were being considered, and they actually reported that um, he had visited the school on November 5th. Uh, but since then, you know, those rumors have kind of been, you know, shut down. Uh, Kirk Herbstreet reported that he spoke with Bob Stoops personally, and Bob Stoops said he was not a candidate for that job. Mm-hmm. But, 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 you know, in professional football and almost every sport, can't always believe what people are saying i'm not gonna say that it's gonna happen or it's not but Mm -hmm. you just can't always believe if you remember a more than a few years back but there was a les miles who was rumored to be the coach for the michigan wolverines and then kirk street said it was a lock it was happening welcome to michigan les miles and then he took a job elsewhere and was like oh all right right so it's hard it's just rumors nothing's official of course no one's gonna come out and say it's official but, uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's done for, and I wouldn't say it's happening. It's just something we're going to have to wait and see. The thing I will say, though, the thing that's, like, really coming out of this story is it made me think a lot about um, the fragility of the XFL, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I think we don't think about it enough, and it's been something that's already happening. The like, season hasn't even started, but, like, these coaches and these players aren't locked into the same kind of contracts they are in other leagues, like yep. the NFL. Yep, yep, yep. So we're not, you know, they can leave at any time. Yeah, and well, that's why I think ultimately the XFL does need some support. Not support like monetarily, but at least acknowledgement that we are the developmental league for the NFL. I think that's the only way that this is going to survive. Whether yeah. whether or not that makes people upset to hear, I see that as the only way it's going to survive past three years. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um... It's like, but do you, hmm, that's, it's tough for me, because mm-hmm. I think they don't need to come out and per se, you know, mm-hmm. say, we I are, mean, they don't need to we make are like your path line. Presentation, yes, but info. just, yeah. I mean, be aware of who you are is all I'm saying. Yeah, they need to just put, you know, 
like if Bob Stoops left, like the Renegades would be pretty fucked because that team yeah. is built around Bob Stoops. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I don't, you know? I don't know if they'd be fucked per se, but I it definitely wouldn't be ideal for your head coach to dip out after the draft and after everything's kind of been in place. So yeah, and and not even just on Bob Stoops' front, like with the players too, like the Battle Hawks have so many players who have already left them. Mm-hmm. That's like I, I at one point considered one of the better teams in the XFL and just with some of these people who are leaving, you know, they've had like two big skill position guys that drafted in phase one leave. Mm -hmm. They had their star center, like their starting center, like the first guy they drafted, he left. They, you know, it's just like the, the fragility of this league is just, it's risky business for this league. Yep. And so I, 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 it's just something like this story was really, it's like, if these rumors are true or not, you know, no one can tell. And Mm -hmm. we're not journalists. Yeah. We don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't have it sources. All we can read is what's being reported by other people, rumors and stuff. So we're not saying it's happening. We're not saying it's not happening. But it brings in, you know, it makes you realize this larger perspective that, like, at any time, these coaches or players can leave. Yeah. I mean, and that's just that's just the reality of being the C-League. And it's just what right. it is. <laughs> and, I, I mean, there, there's a couple coaches in the XFL that um you know i would i don't want to be mean but like past their prime mm-hmm. probably not gonna go find another job mm-hmm. you know like they're probably Ooh. pretty locked in to the xfl yeah I mean, long term you, you never know like like june jones mm-hmm. you know i don't really see him leaving unless he wants to mm-hmm. like unless he's just done the mm-hmm. xfl i don't see a lot of job offers for june jones i mean he same with something. maybe mark I tressman know. I don't know if it will. Mark Trestman's another story. Well, Mark Trestman is actually, I, I'm about to say, a falsehood, so I don't think that's correct. I was going to say I think he's the most winningest coach in CFL, but I don't think that's right. I'm actually going to say that's wrong. <laughs> but um, he has won he the was a good Grey coach, Cup though, in the with CFL. the Montreal Alouettes. Um, and the, uh, the, the Toronto Argonauts. He took and that the Toronto team Argonauts, from being a not very good team to like getting in the playoffs. He was not good as his coach's tenure with the Bears. So Yeah, but that's the NFL. I mean... Mm-hmm. You know, well, we'll save this for another discussion when we kind of yes. going into the teams deeper. But it's just something like I think there's a lot of coaches in the XFL that, uh, you know, they're kind of locked into the XFL. But then there's a couple I think like Bob Stoops mm-hmm. is a guy who could leave at any time. There's uh, who, who's the other one? The New York Guardians coach, uh, uh, Pep Kevin Hamilton. Gilbride. Pep, Hel- Pep oh, Hamilton. Pep Hamilton. Why did I think it was Kevin Gilbride? Yeah. So Pep Hamilton is oh, um, my fault. Is it Kevin Gilbert? I'm pretty sure Am I it's fucking Kevin that up? I know he is a coach. Wait, let me see. Pep Hamilton. Now Pep I'm Pep fucking Ham- up, and so I gotta look this up. Dang, son. Pep Hamilton is... Oh, he's DC oh, Defenders, he's Pep Sanders. Hamilton. Yeah, you That's fucked I, up. I, I, I mixed it up. All right, Pep you Hamilton for the Defenders idiot. is a guy who's like... Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't have as much experience, but he's kind of like one of those guys who's gonna make his name in the XFL and then could potentially find jobs after. So a guy like Pep Hamilton I can see leaving. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And, and so... But then there's, you know, so it, it's it's one of those things where it's like it's almost smarter to get a guy who's experienced and didn't have a lot of success elsewhere mm-hmm. so that you know you have him, but then you also run the, the off chance that, like, he's not very good, and that's yeah. why he's not finding other jobs. Yeah. It's like a weird balance. It's just something I've just been thinking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but but anyway, I mean, that wasn't really a news story. <laughs> it was more of a segue <laughs> to a discussion on coaches, but, yeah, I mean, it was news, and it was something that was kind of talked about, and I, I think... The actual news of it wasn't all that significant because, like, no one's going to know. And if it happens, it happens. But, like, I, I don't know. I don't think it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Do you think it'll happen? What, Bob's just going to Florida State? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's too early to tell right now. I don't think so, personally, uh, just because I think there are other coaches that are in uh, the NCAA that I think are more attractive options at this point. Um, right. But... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I can't really give it an answer. I know that kind of sucks, but I don't know. Yeah, I would. I would feel like he wouldn't, just because. Hmm. It's. It, it was funny because when it happened, it was like almost confirmed as fact. Mm-hmm. Like even though they were just rumors, it was mm-hmm. like yeah, I forget who was reporting that they were like the announcement's coming later this week. It's you know he's visited yeah. and stuff, and I was like, well, damn shit. Well, the the visit was apparently like just a like a. Like a gav- like a party or something. That yeah, I to, so. think I read that too. That he didn't actually visit this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he was, he was just whatever. there. Yeah. He was in the area. 
But, uh, so, I mean, we got to wait and see on that one. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it would have been more of it. Like, there would be better leaks than there was and better, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. There would be more obvious signs that that was happening. And I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. But, um, okay. Well, that's all we had to talk about on that first story, unless you want to add anything. I uh, know. I think we covered all we needed to cover. All right. So, we're going to move on to our second story, which is that uh, ESPN one of the broadcast partners with the XFL. They'll be airing it on ABC, Fox, and ESPN. Um, They announced their broadcast team. Fox has announced their broadcast team in the past. I actually don't have pulled up who that broadcast team is. I know Joe Klatt's involved Mm -hmm. for Fox. Mm -hmm. Um, But ESPN announced their broadcast team this last week, and so that's a team consisting of uh, Steve Levy, who was a former... um, I mean, Steve Levy, who was a longtime ESPN announcer... And then Greg McElroy, who was a former New York Jets uh, quarterback. And so that's going to yes. be the Saturday commentary team. And they'll be joined by uh, on-field analyst Tom Luganville, a guy I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. And, and then on-field reporter Diane, Diane, Diana Rossini. Diane. Diane. Well, you got all those weird, you know, you got Rossini in. It just fucked me up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for Sunday, it'll be Tom Hart who will be doing play-by-play, and then former NFL wide receiver Joe Galloway. Mm -hmm. It'll be the commentary team, and then my favorite addition, Pat McAfee, will serve as the on-field analyst. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you get a chance to see that little, like, video from his podcast where he talked about it? Uh, No, I have not yet. He was was making a lot of jokes. He was like, they told me that it was going to be, like, a very different experience as an on-field analyst. He's like, they pretty much said I could do whatever the fuck I want. He's like, "I (laughs) I could go into their huddle and then be like, be like, hey, you guys should uh, call fucking ZY Banana here or whatever, yeah. you know? Z-Y and I can, like, banana. stand in their huddle and listen to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm excited he's like, for he's that. Like, yeah, I think he'll be really funny on, on the... Like, I think that's what they need. They need to differentiate from the NFL. From the, the NFL the, the and, like, Chris kind Collinsworth. Of oh, oh, yeah, PFF. Oh. <laughs> I hate PFF. I think they suck. Wow! Oh shit! I've got I got a friend who works at PFF. Well, he probably sucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think they need to add some levity and just like don't take it so seriously. I know it is serious, and I and I do appreciate they added some like mm-hmm. strong names, especially Steve Levy, who was a uh, you know he's just been at ESPN for a long time. Like mm-hmm. they're bringing credibility to it, but they need to like it's not. They need, it, they need to it's not, not Joe like Buck and Chris Collinsworth. And yes. Good, good job. I mean, that's what you need. You, Joe Buck. I mean, Joe Buck's really, honestly, not that bad. And Chris Collinsworth just says some dumb things sometimes. But uh, it's just like have some fucking energy or something. Like it, it. Like watching an NFL game sometimes, it's like it'll be a great, like amazing play, and it'll be wow, Chris Collinsworth. Look at. Look at this thing that's happening, not on the field. Oh, God. It's like, okay, like, I, I don't care. Um, <laughs> PFF. Also, that's not what Chris Collinsworth sounds like, but whatever. <laughs> I would say what uh, a Chris Collinsworth impression. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a Chris Collinsworth impression because he actually has a very nice voice. I don't think voice. I can either. Well, he has it's a like very... Some weird place between country and, and like... Well, he has a very know. nice voice for, like, broadcast, so yeah, I, I can't... Sure. I, I don't, so I can't do that. <laughs> Here we are on our podcast. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm you have just... a better uh, voice for recording than I do. Like when nice. I listen to myself, I'm like, Tom's voice is so low and sultry. It's because I got that southern <laughs> twang a little bit from living you here in Lubbock. Town. Southern twang, southern <laughs> twang. Fair. Hell yeah, brother. Amen. We might live. We might live in Texas. We ain't got no southern twang. Ah, speak for yourself, there, brother. <laughs> um, one interesting thing with this broadcast team. And I think this is the guy. I was reading this. I didn't include it in our notes, so I may be saying okay. this wrong. But I think this is the guy. Is this this um, this Tom Lugan Bill guy? Mm-hmm. So he actually worked with the original XFL back in like okay. 2001. That's cool. And and so it was kind of cool. They brought him back. Like I think after 2001, it's, I think it says here he scouts. He joined Scouts Inc. in 2002. So after XFL closed, and then he got involved when when it was purchased by ESPN. So. I, I, you know, I, I think it's good that they're trying to bring in someone from the original XFL. Like, you know, as much as you mm-hmm. want to separate from yourself, you have to, you have to acknowledge that there was an XFL before you, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, but, but, but other ahead. than that, I'm just most excited about Pat McAfee. Honestly, I want to see mm-hmm. what he does. I'm, I'm excited for Pat McAfee just because I like Pat McAfee. Uh, I think he's a funny guy. I think he's just 
a, a genuine dude. Like, he's not going to blow smoke up your ass. To, so, he's not gonna so be, as someone who watches... Mm-hmm. Oh, say what you are going to say. I was going to say, he's just not going to be a company manager. You could transition to WWE stuff. That's true. He does do WWE stuff. He'd be mm-hmm. funny on there yes. when he does do it. Um, yes. So, as someone who watches college football, because I don't mm-hmm. watch all that much college football, mm-hmm. do you know anything about Joe Galloway? So, Joey Galloway was a receiver for Ohio State. Uh, he was really, 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 really good. Um, he's, I mean, he's really good at football. Uh, yeah. Later in his career, he was he kind of followed the same route that Ocho Cinco did, where he was on the Patriots, and they're like, "Wow, you just you have no idea what's going on." So, bye. But uh, he was very talented at Ohio State, very talented for years in the pros. Uh, he was round. He was a first round draft pick, so very talented receiver. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about as an analyst? You know, analyst, as a commentator. Uh, I know very little, mostly because because I'm stupid, and I would get him and Chris Carter mixed up all the time. Because they're both, <laughs> oh, oh, ah, sorry, they're both wide receivers, and right. I in my brain he said some stupid things, but I've been trying furiously to find them, and I can't find <laughs> them. So maybe I'm wrong, and maybe he'll be great. Um, right? Yeah. One thing I'm noticing, like as I'm looking at these, a lot of these guys are college football people, huh? Yeah. So I mean, Hart I'm... is SEC Saturday Night College Football games. Galloway is college football analyst. Uh, for ESPN, McAfee, ESPN, college football analyst and contributor, and I know he also does some, you know, WWE stuff. Yeah, he has a podcast. Um, another one, McElroy, college football like analyst, McElroy. SEC Network. Mm, I like McElroy. Uh, so. He's been a very good, or he's been a solid analyst. Uh, he said some weird things sometimes when it comes to rankings <laughs> and stuff, but uh, he's been a good analyst. Uh, you could do a lot worse than Greg McElroy. So, I mean, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> I, I think it's smart that they really focused on college football guys because, like, mm-hmm. pro guys aren't going to know anything about these players, honestly. They're not going to know anything about these players, and they're getting paid too much to know anything about the players. They'll be like, oh, wow, well, PFF, and then it's just, I, I, I... <laughs> you just, <laughs> You're just salty. <laughs> I don't like PFF. I think they suck. You are so salty. They suck. Um... What was I going to say? But, yeah, it's good that they have the college football guys because, like, all these guys were, like, you know, pretty good in college. Like, I don't know a lot of these. I didn't know a lot of these players, so I'm not a big college football guy. Mm-hmm. And so, but you knew a lot of these players because you were a college football guy. That's correct. Best sport on earth. So, you know, I think bringing in college football analysts is going to, they're just going to already have, you know, knowledge on mm-hmm. these players. Yeah. I, I was saying the same thing about Joe Klatt when they announced him. I was like, oh, Joe Klatt will be good because he's going to know a lot about these players. So... Yeah. I think I think they did well with their selections. ESPN, I didn't add it in here, but they're like they also, you know, they're they're going to be brought. They got the rights to broadcast it internationally, and you know, I th- I think ESPN is going to do a lot of good coverage. I don't know if it's going to. I don't think it's going to be relegated to ESPN two or anything. Like as far as I can tell, it's actually going to be on ESPN like proper. I don't think that's good for them. Yeah, that's a lot of exposure. So, I think ESPN. Uh, you know, I think they'll be doing most of the promotion. I actually wouldn't be surprised if in a couple seasons, next season, it might all go to ESPN at some point. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Because, like, what are, what are they covering in spring, you know? What's Very ESPN little. showing in spring? Uh, I don't ridiculous, know sensationalist on, football stuff that has no bearing on anything that will happen in the season. You are a salty man. You are I just don't like man. sports journalism right now. It sucks. <laughs> well, all journalism sucks for the most part. Well, right but it's now. all sensationalism. It's all how stupid can we sound? To get people to say we're stupid. I whatever. That's another. That's another story. You know, we kind of fall into that category now, Thomas. Uh yeah, we're probably dumb too. Fuck it, we suck. <laughs> so, you know, maybe we need to, you know, tow the company line or something like that. I don't know. What company line? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, whatever. Uh, let me let me think of a hot take right now. Until someone uh, offers us a million dollars to be the exclusive podcast, I'm not towing <laughs> nothing. But when they do offer a million dollars, you can bet I will be towing the line. For a million dollars, I will say Brandon Silvers is the best quarterback in the XFL. Oh, shit, he might be. Shit, you for know? 50 bucks, I might. 50 bucks. <laughs> slide me a fucking Abraham and we can talk. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, let's move on to our last news story, and this is one that's going to be more discussion than news. So um, XFL News Hub had an exclusive story that their their sources 
had told them that the supplemental draft would be taking place on Friday, November 22nd. And this would not come as a surprise because Commissioner Oliver Luck had mentioned that this draft would be taking place at some point before the season started. Makes sense. It would be about a month after the original draft. Um, as far as we can tell, and as far as XFL News Hub has reported, the draft pool will consist of new player invites. We've already seen some of those come out on Twitter. Um, and it'll also be including any of the players that were in the preliminary draft from October that didn't get selected. But of course, because this isn't an official announce- announcement, there hasn't been like much information about like how the draft's going to work. Is it going to be the same where we'll have phases or will it be more like just an open phase the whole time, which I think mm-hmm. is more likely what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, last thing is, like, there's been a lot of talk on Twitter that probably this is around the time that we're going to see the jerseys come out because be there cool. was rumors that the jerseys were coming out in November. It would make sense to kind of do the jerseys around when they're doing this draft, kind of like they did the quarterbacks when they were doing the draft. Now they'll do the jerseys when they're doing this next draft. So That'd be cool. Um, I, do, you, do you feel like, you know... They should do it like like they did the last draft, or should it just be an open phase the whole time? Uh, I'd like it to just be an open phase, just because then you can kind of, I don't know, you can kind of just get who you want to get. Um, mm-hmm. You don't necessarily ha- like have to, if a team is already set or they like what they have, they don't have to get another one, uh, like a right, DB or right. something. Um, so I'd rather be open phase myself. Yeah, and you know what this draft really is helpful for? I would almost push this draft back later if I was mm-hmm. the XFL, but... It makes sense why they're doing it now. Mm-hmm. The only thing I want to say is, like, as we're seeing with the Battle Hawks, like, players are leaving mm-hmm. already. Like, some have already left. Like, not a ton of people have left, but over the course of the season, and it's already happened. It's been about a month. We've already had players leave. You know, I, you can expect more players are going to leave. Mm-hmm. And so it'd be almost better to push this back a little bit later, like, right before training camp starts. I, I'm not sure. I should have looked this up, but I think that November 22nd date puts it two weeks before training camp or something like that. So my, that might be as late as they could have waited. Probably. I might have read that somewhere. Now, I could be completely wrong on that mm-hmm. But I'm uh, not a journalist. But if that's <laughs> if that's correct, then that's probably, yes, that's probably as late as they could have waited uh, just yeah, to play so, a situated. So if that's the, that's the case, if that's the case, you know, it makes mm-hmm. sense, but... But, uh, you know, I think what this draft is going to be good for is these players that left. And there are, you know, I think... You know, the teams considered that this draft was going to be taking place because there are teams that didn't draft certain positions, like teams that don't have kickers or punters or any of the specialists. Yes. And this will be kind of the place to take them, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's there's holes in teams. Like, when I was doing my power rankings, because we've been working on our power rankings, um, when I was doing my power rankings, I was like, they have a big-ass hole at running back. They did not address running back. Or there was a team, can't remember it off the top of my head, that doesn't have a center on the team. That's good. And... They're going to need to draft a center in the supplemental draft. <laughs> Even if you want to transition one of the other players you draft and move them to center, like you should still just get a center just in case. Yeah. So that'll be good for that. And I agree, it should just be an open phase. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Uh, I guess that's all we have to talk about for that one. Yeah? Yeah, basically. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the big chunk of today's show, which you've all been waiting for. Probably not. But, you know, someone actually recommended this topic to me. That's why yes. it's on the show. Thank you for let recommending me, a topic to us. Let me pull us. up his name on my Twitter real quick. Yeah, so you said you know, give him a shout-out. This is kind of like a, like, like oh, we should plug this right now. Mm-hmm. Thomas, plug our... <laughs> plug our um, if you want to send us a topic request or a question about anything at all, life, wrestling, NFL, XFL, NCAA, whatever... You can send that, <coughs> as I cough, you can send that to at XFL Extra Point on Twitter or the email, which is extrapointcontact at gmail.com. Wonderful. You know, Thomas, you should learn the email so you don't have to ask me for it. <laughs> well, I won't have to ask you for it so you don't do the XFL. So that's XFL. great. XFL. Um, <laughs> no one's going to get that because we cut it every time. Oh, we did up. cut it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. It yeah, I mystery. fuck up a lot because he throws to me and I forget. It will, and he gets scared and nervous. I get scared and nervous because this is I'm a big time re- broadcaster now. <laughs> you almost said reporter when you just say you were a reporter. I did almost bitch. say reporter. Stupid idiot. Um, um, all right, so we got recommended this topic, this rule discussion, the rule changes. Uh, we got recommended by at Max Scouts uh, on Twitter. So thank you so much for sending that our way. He sent it via DM. 
So if that's how you want to contact us, contact us via DM. So anyway, let's get into this rule discussion. There's been a few rule changes that have already been, you know, they haven't been formally announced, but, you know, they're out in the air. We know they, they, they've they been, te- they tested them in uh, Mississippi, I think. And they mm. had like a kind of day where they tested all these rules out. So there's a couple, there's, there's also a couple proposed ones that aren't really confirmed, but people think are going to happen. We're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the ones that are pretty much confirmed. Um, so let's start with, the, I think, the biggest one, which is the forward lateral rule. Um, so the XFL is test, or they test the idea of treating all passes that are behind the line of scrimmage as lateral passes, and you know, you're, so that means pretty much you can do as many forward laterals behind the line of scrimmage as you want. Mm-hmm. And what that also uh, you know, brings with it is that that means anyone behind the line of scrimmage is an eligible receiver. That means yep. offensive line linemen are eligible receivers. Just anyone. So uh, Luck said that he wanted to do this because it has the added benefit of simplifying officiating. Mm-hmm. And he figured it'd be easier for, you know, rather than being like, okay, they're throwing this pass forward on a, you know, is it going beyond this parallel line? It's like, yep. okay, let's just, if if it's behind the line of scrimmage, that's a that's fine. It can yeah. pass and go any which way and it won't be a problem. Yeah. So, um, so offensive linemen would be prohi- prohibited from advancing downfield before a forward pass that crosses the line of scrimmage is uh-huh. in the air. So it's, you still can't have an eligible uh, receiver downfield. Mm-hmm. And it would also, um, what, what was, where, I, I got so much notes here that I can't <laughs> trip up. There was something I wanted to, oh, the league has yet to clarify that if, if they drop a screen pass or any pass behind the line of scrimmage, if it would be treated as an incomplete pass or a fumble. So that's, All I right. think, going to be a big factor. Yes. So, so I, I think that rule could bring with it some interesting scheme things. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, I'm all for big dudes getting the ball more. Uh, Do you think they'd actually throw it to an offensive line? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Why not? I mean, if the defense is over there, like, it could. Jesus Jones? Sorry, my Jeez, dog just dog. threw it. My dog just threw her shoe <laughs> into a door. Um, uh, completely lost the train of thought. Okay. Um, they could they could treat it like like almost like an option play where ball is snapped, lateral pass, lateral pass again, O line goes down the field, a skill player goes to the right, see where the defense goes. I mean, I know it'd be more complicated than that, but um, I don't know. Fuck it. Why not? I mean, if it works, it works. You know what this remind makes me think of when I read this rule? Well, I don't remember if you remember back in high school football, there was a I play do. designed for me I that we do. would run. In I scrimmage do. that was totally It was illegal. called certain touchdown. So I would play center in high school. And what I would do is I would just block, and then I'd stop blocking, and I'd turn around, and he'd throw, the quarterback would throw me a ball, and I'd run. If we, we did that in a game, it would be a fucking penalty. Yeah, <laughs> so, we, well, we ran it against the freshman in the scrimmage one time. They are like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, they were so pissed. Like, you can't do that. that and Coach Harris was like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> I got tackled. I ran I ran like five yards and got tackled. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's that. <laughs> But, okay, uh, it worked. But um, what was I going to say? So, like, yeah, cool. If a big boy gets the ball and then runs downfield, runs over some it's I just don't think that's really going to happen because you really want your big dudes carrying the ball. But I think what it does is going to – it makes sense that we saw so many players that were, you know, former quarterbacks converted to wide receiver or, you know, people who played, like, a ton of different positions. Yeah. Like, I can't remember this for a fact, but didn't Rashard Davis just, like, play everything? Yeah. Was this rule one of the reasons that he got drafted first overall? Is that this rule is going to make you know utility players so much more valuable on the field? Yeah, I think so. So, I think it's a cool rule. I have no problems with that rule. I think that's something we'll be doing. Do you like this rule or do you not? Because that's mm-hmm. probably people want to know that. I like mm-hmm. this rule. Do you like? This I like rule? it too. I mean, purists will be like, "Well, it's not the game," but I mean, this literally takes nothing away. From football, mm-hmm. it just it, it it adds more possibilities, so I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what kind because of, I'm not smart enough to think of anything except oh they're gonna throw the ball at the offensive lineman, but I'm sure there's actually cool shit you could do. Yeah, I'm sure there's a bunch of different other stuff than just that, um, which I mean I'm sure we'll see. So, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're gonna move on to the next rule. Lots lots of special teams rule changes. That's the, that's a the big thing. There's lots of special team stuff to change. Mm-hmm. Um, so for fair catches, so there's going to be no fair catches in mm-hmm. the XFL, mm-hmm. but the kicking team must give the returner five yards of space to recover the ball, yes. re- recover and return the ball. So 
it's going to be the last. I, I don't think there's going to be as many muffed punts. Mm-hmm. And well, you know, I, I, no one's really going to be getting rocked. You know, uh-huh. the first thing when you hear fair catch is you think, well, that's fucking dangerous. <laughs> you know, motherfuckers about to get their heads blown off. Yeah. But no, they're giving them space. I, I don't know how I feel about this rule, but what, mm-hmm. what do you what do you think? I actually don't like this. Um, yeah, I don't know if I do either. Mainly because I think that this will actually be pretty difficult to not enforce per se, but like, oh, five yards. And then it's like, well, he was four yards away, so was that a penalty or something? Um <laughs> I'd just rather there be fair catches. I understand the point of it because you want kickoff returns, but for something that almost never happens already, I right. I, I I don't see the point. Um, yeah, they obviously did it because they're trying to revive kickoffs as something exciting in football because they're not right now. They're not because people are too good, but I think that's part of what makes kickoffs so exciting is that if you get a really good one, it almost never happens. So it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, so, all these rules, are I wouldn't say all of them, most of these rules were – are going to be enforced to make the game faster. Oh, it's all to speed the up the game, game to make more, it more exciting. Yeah, entertaining, speed it up, all that jazz. Um, which I mean, it's fine. I mean, that's a noble pursuit. But at the yeah. same time, I just this one I just don't like personally. Um. Okay. Well, I, so I'm I'm saying no. I don't like this rule. You're saying no. You don't like this rule either. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. So moving on. To kickoffs. Kickoffs are kind of a weird thing. I should have included, included a picture here. Thomas, if you would scroll back up to um, mm-hmm. where, where that link was at the top under rules discussion. Yes. Okay? And I want you to scroll. Actually, you'll see it. You see the first picture on the right? Yes, the new XFL kickoff formation. Look yes. at that. Yes. <laughs> is that it's, weird as fuck or no? It's very <laughs> odd. So pretty much what it is, and the words are kind of confusing without seeing the picture. But okay, so the kickoffs will be attempted with teams separated by only five yards, with the two teams not allowed to cross the neutral zone until the remaining team touches, or until the returning team touches the ball. The spot of the kickoff will be moved back to the 15 yard, or will likely be moved back to the 15 yard line to make touchbacks all but impossible. In the impossible event that a touchback does happen, the ball will be taken to the 35 yard line to discourage kickers from kicking the ball that far. They don't want touchbacks. That's the biggest thing. Yes. So what's what's fucking weird about this? All right, mm-hmm. is this formation is strange. <laughs> this yes. formation is very strange. It does look I weird. Get, I, I don't know if it's better or not. Let me look at the picture again. Uh, I mean, it'd probably be better. Cause, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the blockers more readily able to contact with the <clears throat> the kicking team. So, I mean, moving them mm-hmm. closer, moving that is fine. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I mean... Yeah. Here's the thing with this, is it, it's I guess it's not all that different, right? Because they're not allowed to pass it until the bo- the, the the returner touches the ball. Yeah. So it's like they would have probably been at that this point. On this picture, they're they're all they're li- all lined up on the thirty five, mm-hmm. on the opposing thirty five, um, and so I guess that's would be about where they would be once the returner touched the ball if you had them lined up at you know. The 35 on the other exactly. side. Exactly. By the time the return exactly. touches the ball, they'll probably have got to the 35. So I guess maybe it is a safety thing too. Like you're just mm-hmm. not running full speed into blockers for, uh, you know, I mean, 50 they yards. Could, they could probably guise it as a safety thing, but I doubt that's what the intention is. Well, I think that I think they're trying to find a balance between safety and uh, mm-hmm. an exciting play. You know. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like like the, the the former XFL, you know, 2001 iteration of XFL was like. No safety. Fuck you. Fucking break your shit up. (laughs) But they know that's not cool in 2019. That's not cool. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, it'll just be interesting to see how how these kickoffs work. But I'm I'm not opposed to this. How do you feel about it? I'm not opposed to it either. Um, I don't really think it'll make that large of a difference. Um, I still think kickoff returns will be rare. Uh, I think you'll definitely get better field position out of this. Um, but mm. at the same time, I, I, I don't see it being a huge factor. So right. I, I, I think don't the care. biggest thing we have to note here is that there's no touchbacks. And if you do get a touchback, it puts you at the 35 yard line. Yeah. Which might be a better option. Yeah. I mean, so, you're going to return every play. That's essentially yeah. what they're saying. You're going to get so. a, some kind of return. Like it's true that I'm like, man, kickoffs are kind of formality in the NFL. Like, mm-hmm. okay, most of the time they're kicking it through the uprights. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they kick so, it that far almost every yeah. time. So, 
Yeah. So I think it, it'll be exciting. I think it's a good move. I'm not. I think you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. I I really don't have an opinion about it one way or the other. Uh, I could do with it. Could do without it. It doesn't really affect my enjoyment of watching football. So. All right. Um. All right. We'll move on to the next thing. This is one that I think is very interesting. It's how mm-hmm. they'll be doing the point after the PATs. Um. So there will be no extra point kicks. Instead, mm-hmm. it will be replaced with a scrimmage play that will be varying in point value depending on how far the touchdown scoring team chooses to take the snap from the goal line. So like mm-hmm. a two-yard attempt would score a single point, a five-yard attempt two points, and a ten-yard attempt three points. So there's more, you know, you can potentially get, you know, nine points on a play. Yeah. Um, definitely more exciting than a, than a field goal. Sure. Definitely more exciting if you're a Vikings fan. Yeah. <laughs> and your kicker misses PATs. Mm-hmm. Um, it does sort of de-emphasize kicking. I mean, there is still field goals that you 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 know, but PATs, they they tried to change it in the NFL by making it go farther back, mm-hmm. and you know people are missing more. But it's still just kind of boring. I guess yeah. PATs are kind of a boring play. No one really wants to watch a, a point after kick. Yeah, I mean sometimes it's crucial, but you're like for the most part you're like oh, okay they're gonna make this kick. So throwing something like this in there. Giving us more offense versus defense is always going to be more exciting. Yeah. Um, do you have any problems with that at all? Okay. Um, it doesn't really bother me. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a necessary rule change, but I think it will... I don't know. I mean, it, more points is more exciting no matter what, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of seems like they're like, well... Fuck PATs. Let's just fucking run. It. Like I don't know. It just seems unnecessary to me. But at the yeah, same time, like you want I get little what changes like that. Uh, do you? You know, you're not the NFL. Do you want? It's like I get that there's a there's a point where you go, oh, do they change things just to be different? But like, mm-hmm. if their end goal is to be more exciting, this this is a way to do it. I mean, I don't like watching PATs. I mean, I know you, you know. don't. Do you like watching PATs? I don't mind watching PATs. But, like, now, you're like, now, you don't pay now, attention during them. Now, I do despise the, all right, touchdown. All right, commercial break. All right, PAT. <laughs> all right, commercial break. That makes me want to die. But yeah. everything else about PATs is fine. I mean, like I said, this isn't, this doesn't offend me or anything. Like, I'm not like, this is a, t- a terrible rule. I just was like, eh, yeah, yeah, sure. That'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean... I mean, it gives you more possibilities to come back to, you know, traditional, uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, two score games can now be potentially one score games if you're only down by nine, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's a benefit. I mean, more ways to, to make a comeback. Uh, I think, so the single point is from the two yard attempt, right? So that's, that's like kicking a PAT is to go for it from a two. Still hard to get in from the two. Yeah. Generally, it's not easy. You, know, you can try to run up the middle, but yeah, it, it's it's still a tough play. So I think there's going to be a fair amount of six point drives mm-hmm. in this I mean, league. Yeah, you know, I I I don't like. Imagine if your offense was really fucking trash, mm-hmm. <laughs> like you were really bad. You're like, yeah. fuck yes, we finally got a touchdown, but you only get six points because your offense is really bad. Yeah, I could see that being a problem. You're like, I don't trust my offense whatsoever. Yeah, so. Like, I'm trying to think of a team in the NFL that would not hate to do this. Yeah. But, you know, I could see, I mean, it has its pros and its cons. Uh, but I think generally it's fine and it's it's good. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's more exciting than a PAT. I don't think I've ever been like, unless it's like a game's on the line, I don't think I've ever been like, please make this fucking PAT. <laughs> but Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's just more exciting. Um, okay. Well, let's move on to the next rule, which is another big one, another thing added for... Um, excitement in the game uh overtime so overtime will be decided by a multi-round shootout uh, Mm -hmm. of one point conversions but instead of taking it from the two yard line you're taking it from the five yard line so this is Mm -hmm. sort of like what they do in college but not at all at the same time (laughs) sort of but not at all (laughs) uh i wish they would have just done college rules because that's i understand what they're trying to do here and this this isn't bad either um but i just the college overtime is the best so there will be five rounds of the shootout uh, mm-hmm. where the offense can score a point by converting in the end zone while the defense can score a point by forcing a turnover. Mm-hmm. Should a turnover occur, the play is dead. 
And so whoever has the most points after five rounds, that's who wins the game. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, so one thing they're doing to try to make it faster, and I don't watch a lot of college, so this might be one of the reasons they didn't do the way college does it, is that I don't think there will be a whole lot of commercials because they're, they, they're literally going to have one offense in one end zone, one offense in the other end zone. Yeah. So they're going to run their play. They fail, succeed, whatever. Camera moves over to the other side. They run their play, and we just do that till it's over. Yeah. And it should be over in like five, six minutes. That's what I was doing, yeah. like the estimate might be. Five, six mm -hmm. minute overtime. That's, I that's mean, how quick it could be. Like I said, like, that's fine. Like, this is actually, I think this is a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. I wish they would have just done the college overtime just because I like that so much, but I, this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a good idea. <laughs> um, one other thing. So, there hasn't been any kind of confirmation what will happen if the teams tie after the five mm -hmm. rounds. Uh, Luck said, uh, all, I almost said Andrew Luck, Commissioner Oliver Luck has said <laughs> he doesn't rule out the possibility of a regular season tie. However, mm -hmm. if this were to happen in the postseason, multiple rounds will go until someone wins, until someone gets more points. Good. So, and yeah, because you can't good that they, the they've they come out and said that because the NFL still hasn't said anything about that if that were to happen in the postseason. And if that were to happen in the postseason, they'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, ah, oh, fuck. Uh, and it'd be Has a shit show. Has that never happened in the NFL? Nope, not in the postseason. I don't know. That's why the overtime rules for the NFL sucks. Okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, I like this. This is cool. Mm -hmm. And yes. what I like about it, I don't think there's going to be any commercials in overtime. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I like that too a lot. That's a big big plus. I mean, I'm sure they'll, they'll find a way to put commercials in there. But Here's the thing. It's only five. You know, I, the, the estimate I was reading was like five or six minutes overtime. You don't really need I'm a commercial in five or six minutes. Uh, mm, mm, mm. I hope that the reason Naive they're trying to soul. speed up the game is so that they don't have to put as many commercials in. That is definitely not the reason that they're speeding up the game because I think, commercials is money. But if they want to speed up money. the game, the biggest thing and the number one thing is not breaking us up with commercials. There's not as much stoppage. There's mm -hmm. not going to be as much commercials. I think the biggest thing for them is they need to have a competent referee association and then they'll be fine. Well, uh, I'm going to jump ahead since you mentioned referees. That's fine. <laughs> and that is a good segue. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some officiating changes, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a specialized ball judge who will be added to the team whose whole job will be speeding up the placement of the ball, uh, bringing the number of on-field officials to eight. So this good. guy's whole job will be, I'm watching the ball, and I'm going to spot it well. Good. You better be an athlete and be able to run and put the ball where he needs to go instead of wasting seven seconds being like, oh, I'm going to just saunter on over here. All right, yeah. ball down. All right, because I hate that. Don't have 90-year-old men as officials, NFL. That's stupid. <laughs> um, they should get uh, Galloway to do it. That'd be nice, you know. He <laughs> can probably move. He can probably move. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I mean, I think if this guy's whole thing... I mean, it, it should speed it up if he's like... Because, you know, placement of the ball is shitty a lot of the times. Like, yeah. really shitty. Like yeah. today in the Lions game when Kenny Galladay just placed the ball himself two yards from where he was tackled. And they were like, yeah, it looks good. Because the NFL refs are terrible. <laughs> right. So, like, one guy whose specific job is to place the ball, I think, is a good thing. Good. That's a great idea. Uh, more referees on the field that have sp specific jobs. Right. That take the load off of the referees who call flags. So they don't have to do as much so they can get the call right instead of getting it wrong. Okay. Uh, another officiating change. This is the one you were kind of questioning, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a new rule proposal, uh, a tap penalty opposed on individual mm -hmm. players instead of entire teams. So if a player were to commit a foul, which is not seri serious enough to warrant a penalty flag, mm -hmm. they'll just be sent off the field for one play. Mm -hmm. um, another attempt to keep the game moving quickly, but also not allowing players to break the rules because, you know, the NFL is suffering from a lot of flags right now that yeah. are slowing down uh, the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so this is sort of like what they do in, in hockey, mm -hmm. but... They actually, in hockey, they make you don't get to substitute. Mm -hmm. In the XFL, you'll be able to substitute your player. So oh, yeah. if, if, you're, you if your star that'd fucks be, up, yeah. you're out. I mean, if you, you'd one, have right? to substitute. If you couldn't substitute, that'd be impossible. It'd be um, impossible, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't like this just because that's going to be hard to interpret. So, like, to put it in perspective, if Pat Mahomes calls somebody an asshole and then it's the last second of the game and the ref is like, get out of the game, son of Jim. Uh, that's not, a, no, that's a bad, like that, that's going to be, since there's no quantifiable way that I've heard yet to know what a tap penalty is, then this is dumb and this is bad. Well, I figure I they'll like come it. out and say, and, and 
how many times in the let's be realistic how many times in the mm-hmm. nfl are you seeing people getting penalized for calling someone an asshole i think it's going to be more things like like you know holding or well, or uh as long as it's actually holding then whatever fine but if it's like the not holding that the nfl loves to call then well i mean to be fair if it's not holding and the ref just fucks up i'd rather them just take my player out for one play than make me move back 10 yards uh, it just depends on who's coming to replace you know? him, I guess. So, like, it, it kind because, of, like, you get fucked, you know? Like, you're like, wow, hands to the face mask. His hands were on his fucking crotch or something. <laughs> How yeah. did you call hands to the face mask? Yeah. And, and then and then you got to wait for him to call the thing, then talk about it. You know, they got to huddle up. Okay, guys, did you see hands to the face? He's like, no, nah, dude, I saw, you know, no, I saw dude. his hand on his dick. He's like, mm. well, I saw his hand on his face, so we're going with that. And they're like, all right, mm-hmm. all right, uh, you know, face mask penalty on offense, move him back 10 yards. And they got to move him back 10 yards. And then they got to go home. It's a lot easier, I feel like, to just be like, hey, man, you grabbed his fucking face. Get out of here for one play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Also, I don't know why they announce the penalties. Yeah. Like, yeah. they should just well, have I guess a runner. Fans would be pissed. They're like, what the fuck? Why are we moving backwards? Well, just have a runner go, like, to one coach, to the other coach. Here's a penalty, blah, blah. Here's a penalty. Blah. Have another runner go to the network guy, and they put it up there. Like, okay, yeah. You don't have to be like, oh, my mic isn't working. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> for, oh, uh, holding, offense, number, hi to who. And then they always fuck up the number. Yeah. So, whatever. Yeah, that's true. Five yards, repeat, first down. Boom. So, I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm for the tap penalty. Because mm. I, I think if you're, you're – your intention is to stop the, you know, not to stop the play, not mm-hmm. make us have to wait for you guys to all huddle up and talk about it, and then fucking move the ball back and make sure your placement's right and mm-hmm. all that it, shit. It just depends on how they, what they're gonna do, use it for. It's like losing a player it. for a play is not nearly as severe. Depends on the player. I mean, for sure, if it's your quarterback, you might be fucked. Quarterback, one, if it's your best play. corner, if it's your best receiver, if it's your running back, if it's your center, that's a big deal. <laughs> True. So, so, I mean, it's still, but I feel like that's good at the same time. Because yeah, you need, but, you don't want it to be like, I don't give a fuck. If we commit penalties, all they're going to do is take you. No, okay, now I just made myself think of something. You have a <laughs> shitty ass player, right? Yeah. Let's say you have a fucking there shitty ass something. guard. You're like, hey, man. Punch him. You're going against the Cleo Mac of the XFL. Pull punch the him. fuck out of him every play. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to tell him to punch him because they said that they'll, they'll only be doing this on fouls that don't pose a threat to player safety. So ah, if it's something okay. like head-to-head contact, you're going to get a penalty flag. You know? All right. But, um, but for things like holding, I mean, maybe it's a strategy. Maybe you're like, all right, I need you to go in there. And we're just going to alternate. We have two guys, right? All right, I should be an XFL coach. We have two guys who are shitty at our guard position, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll just alternate fouling on each play and then sub for each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole game. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Because, <laughs> like, they're only gone for one play. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they'll enforce something like a strike rule. Like, maybe if you do it three times, it's like, okay, hold up. Yeah. I don't know. We need the, like, official, official rule book to come out so we can see this for sure. But lots of this has already been talked about publicly. But just some yeah. details are missing. Yeah. Um, all right. So for our last, you know, rule change that we're going to talk about, and that's going to be the clock changes. Again, lots of this done to make the game faster. So pretty much outside of the two minute warning, the clock is going to be constantly running. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time the clock would stop is during a change of possession. Yep. So game's faster. Uh, I don't like it. Do- <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad at college. Don't they do something like like doesn't the clock run in weird ways compared to the NFL in college? Uh, ah, there are minor differences, yes, but none that I can relate to this exact thing right now. Uh, I know in college, if you go out of bounds, I shouldn't say I know because it might have changed on me. But <laughs> I think it's you go out of bounds, the clock stops no matter what. While in the NFL, it's the clock stops only in the last two minutes if you go out of bounds. Is that or true? maybe it's maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's <laughs> the flip flop. There's something anytime. there's something weird in the NFL where it's kind of like that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so that is it's just speeding up the game outside two minutes. The games are going to be significantly shorter, which yes. might be a good thing. Yeah, probably a good thing, but also from a football stratagem standpoint, I don't like this rule. Right, I mean, because you do start doing, you know, they call it a four minute offense, you know. Yeah. So. It's, not a, it's not always a two-minute. You do a four-minute yeah. offense. So 
That's right. That's true. You know, maybe I'd like to see them bump this up to four minutes or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's been confirmed. Maybe it has. How how long the quarters are? How many timeouts? I assume do they're they the same. Do they get three still. Wait, say that again. Do they only get or do they get three timeouts still? Yeah, I'm sure you still get three timeouts. Okay. I don't know that for a fact, but that would make sense. Yeah, I didn't read I mean, anything otherwise. W- without this rule, I would expect um, more. But yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so the playcock will be the play. Did I say the playcock? You definitely said the playcock. Oh man. The play oh, clock Rough. will be 25 seconds long, measured mm-hmm. from the end of the previous play, so that's the shortest in any U.S. league. Yeah. Um, but with this rule, they the XFL has proposed placing a one-way radio into an mm-hmm. offensive player's helmet to allow the offensive coordinator to run a no-huddle offense and call plays directly to all of the players from the sidelines so mm-hmm. they wouldn't need to huddle. So it'd be pretty much like you'd be running no huddle at all times. You don't have... Because that means every single player on the field, the wide receivers would hear the play call, the linemen would hear the play call. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be only the quarterback who hears it then has to relay it to everyone. That's a good idea. I hope there are no technical difficulties with that. (laughs) Yeah, that could really be a problem if there was technical difficulties. But maybe if, you know, well, no, because they won't be huddling. So I would say, well, if if at least one guy hears it. Yeah. Maybe maybe in the event that, that there is technical difficulties, maybe they set up like, you know, or or they're just like, hey, dude, call play if you can't fucking hear us. <laughs> just yeah. come up with something. Just yell like banana, and that means we're running a fucking jet sweep to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I think that's probably smart. Though, I don't I don't ever really have a problem with huddles in the NFL. Yeah. I almost, like, never notice them. It seems like by the time they cut back to the action, you're like, oh, wow, they're already just, like, getting ready to, you know, call, you know, run the play. Yeah. I, I don't have problems with huddles either. Um, I don't really have a problems have a problems. I don't really have problems with the quote unquote speed of the game either. Um, I think it's mainly stoppage of play due to reviews that take entirely too long or random stuff that has nothing really to do with the actual game itself that makes the game quote unquote slower. So, right. But um, that's just me. Yeah, for me, I do have some problems with the pace of the game in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I, I do think, like, I don't want to say, uh, maybe I do want to say, I don't know. Okay, so, like, are the commercials caused by the game being slow, or the, is the game being slow cause, caused by the commercials? I mean, I think commercials definitely adds to the game being slow because of, as I said before, the dreaded touchdown commercial, PAT right. commercial, then kick. Oh, I didn't say this. The touchdown commercial, PAT commercial, then kickoff, and then commercial again. Right. And it's like, oh my god! And it's always the same car commercial, where it's <laughs> oh, oh, I I don't remember what year this was, but there was a year where it was like they did back in black on a violin, and I wanted to fucking <laughs> shoot myself by like the four-year time I heard that. Burn, burn, no, 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 no. I was like, oh my god. So, yeah. <laughs> or or Aaron Rodgers' really shitty commercials. Those are good commercials. Come on now, those are his, great. Commercials. His new ones? Yeah, uh, the one where <laughs> the one with Pat Mahomes is not very good, but the one where they're talking outside and he's like, I don't know, "There's the motorcycle involved." That one was fine. The one where they're talking about apps, that one's bad because that's like, oh, the app kids love apps. Right. So. You just um, hate Aaron Rodgers. Don't even, don't even start that with here. Well, with Patrick this. Mahomes is in it now. I don't hate Patrick Mahomes. Well, yeah, but you said the Aaron Rodgers commercial. You didn't say the State Farm commercial. You said the Aaron Rodgers commercial. So, you Floyd know who has slip, good commercials? You hate Aaron Rodgers. Dummy. You fell right in my trap. You know who has good commercials? What? Baker Mayfield. Uh, yes, he actually does have good commercials. But <laughs> um, it is a little annoying. And he played well today. But it is a little annoying to see him in commercials even when we're not playing well and i understand okay like colin a, coward no like that's like a super <laughs> boomer thing to say but at the same time like it's just like like come on and i'm not even saying like you should have been watching film instead of being in commercials because <laughs> that's stupid that's a dumb thing to say but it's like why are we playing the same baker mayfield commercial over and over when when we're not playing good like come on come come on I like the one where he's like has all the people and they're like leaving and he's like, "Oh, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming." And he's like, "Next oh, yeah. time your place." And then he starts vacuuming up the shit. Yeah, That's I like funny. that a lot. I like the one where he's mowing the lawn. He's like, "Man, just cut his own grass." <laughs> yeah, I think all of them are pretty good. <laughs> they're all really good. I like. I mean, he's also he's got a good personality for that, so that's really good stuff. Except uh, sometimes it looks bad when you're losing. I mean, 
it does and it doesn't. It does to the boomer part of my brain, which is very small. But to the then I take back and I think second, I'm like, ah, it's fine. Get your money. Yeah. Yeah. I think those personalities. Well, this is a weird topic we're going on, but like, fuck it. Fuck we'll it. Do it for a second. Um, I think personalities like Baker Mayfield uh, are really great when you're successful. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as you're not successful, it looks really bad. It well, it only looks bad to reactionary people and people who are knee jerkists. Knee jerkists? Yeah, that's a word. All right, thanks. Knee so. jerk so reaction really people. Bad. You calling me something? I uh, yeah, I am. I say you're a knee jerk reaction guy. Mm, I think I see <laughs> the reality. I'm not stuck in my ways. Okay, Aaron Rodgers. Like okay, we just went boomer. Over this. <laughs> you're the boomer in the situation I'm saying it's fine You're like he should be getting practice reps no, Metal I mean, reps I, You were the one I never said that What I said is his personality It's I like said, you it's lose and you go part Keep of that my brain. same energy It's like okay calm down dude No they keep the same energy crowd Did you see Tyron Matthew on Twitter today? Who? Tyron Matthew, the safety for the Chiefs. Oh, no, I didn't, no, I didn't see. What did you so do? Ryan Clark on Twitter was like, oh, fucking the Chiefs defense is so bad because the Chiefs defense lost in the game, like right. 100%. And so Tyron Matthew on Twitter is like, keep that same fucking energy, clown. We just need some dogs on this team. It's like, he's just saying you guys are bad and you're bad. Like, he's right. Like, what, that's so stupid. Like, keep that same energy when we get good players on this defense so our defense isn't bad. Like, what? That's, uh, whatever, tangent. The same could be said about the Browns. No, no, not really. You guys they really haven't that talked that much, to be honest. I mean, the whole reason they even got hyped up was mostly, mostly media driven. So, mm. I don't know, man. All right, well, we should get back to the XFL because that's what yes. this podcast Sorry. is yeah. about. This is the XFL podcast. <laughs> hey, what's up? Welcome to the XFL Extra Point. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> metal reps. <laughs> That arrest um, is stupid Where was time. I? Fuck. Uh, I think we only have one last thing to talk about. Well, <laughs> let's, let's get to instant, it. Instant replay reviews will be limited to 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's fine. I, I, again, now, going back into... Not going back into NFL, but I've always said they need to have a guy who they're talking to, especially for catch reviews, where it's like you have 10 seconds. This is a catch, yes or no. Don't say anything else but yes or no. Three, two, one, yes. Okay, cool. Because yeah. when you slow yeah. it down and you overthink it and you watch it in slow motion 3,000 times, it's just like, ugh. Uh, and you know what I fucked with in the AAF? What did you fuck with do? in the AAF? Is remember how it was like they had a guy and anytime it went up to the booth, you could hear the guy discussing it? Yes, I like that a lot. Because I like that a lot, too. I like that a whole that. lot. They should bring that in for the XFL. That'd be great. And it, that was really good because he'd be like, well... See, what I want is I don't want them to know that they're being recorded. So you get one dude who's just like, fucking, I don't fucking know. Gee, oh, God. He's like, why Joe. would you put me in this spot? Just call some shit on the field. Yeah, he's like, this, this is an important call. I don't fucking know what's going on. He's like, oh, shit. I got to call my wife. I got to call my wife. <laughs> Did you watch that <laughs> That'd shit? That'd be great. Was that shit? catch? <laughs> oh, thanks, babe. I can't tell. I can't tell. But, yeah, like I like that a lot in the AF. Um I think the NFL currently has a problem with that, and I think that's due to more incompetence than anything, but yeah, it makes me like an asshole. Uh, incompetence. Uh, maybe I'm an <laughs> asshole. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I like it. I can see where it would yeah. be a problem if they're, like, panicking, and they're like, oh, I don't know, whatever, fuck it. But at the same time, the more you look at it, probably the more wrong you're going to be. So, I like it. Right, right. Yeah, I like it, too. You just need to speed yeah. the fucking thing up. That's what yeah. I like about these rules. They were like, let's speed yeah. the fucking thing up. Yeah. You know? Like You know? I don't I don't need my games to be like two and a half hours, three hours. I don't necessarily need them to be an hour and a half either though. Like I I enjoy watching football. Um Right, but like seventy well, I wouldn't say seventy five percent. Twenty five percent of the time you're not actually watching football. Fair. So. Now, I wish they would instead of like see, they need to bring like Mike Duff back or something. So they can just like, oh, there's the middle of a review. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, look, it's it's you know a player mic'd up, and he's being like, God, fuck, fucking well, we have fuck. Pat McAfee. That's true. He's we do have Pat like McAfee. Right so uh, problem solved. Problem solved. Because Pat McAfee yeah. will just be like, ah, well, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
But it'll still be entertaining because it's Pat McAfee, so it'll be fine. You, you should watch that little clip of him explaining what he's doing because it's kind of crazy. He's like, he's like, literally, they told me I can fucking do anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like Pat McAfee, so I'll be watching that pretty soon here. Probably he was, as soon as we get done recording. He was like, they literally said, I have unprecedented access. I can go walk over anywhere access. I want and start yeah. interviewing people. <laughs> so I think that'll be cool. I mean, and he's yeah. a good personality, so. Yeah. And he's a genuine dude, it seems like, so. Well, I think that's our show, right? What are we at? An hour? Yeah, about an hour. Hey, good shit. Yeah. Okay. So we got to an hour. Had a little bit of NFL talk in there, but mostly XFL talk, right? Yeah. Well, a little bit of my NFL angry time, which uh-huh. is not I think that was like most of the show was your NFL angry time. NFL angry time, that's fine. I mean, then people get my opinions about NFL angry time. That would be a good podcast name. But, but, you know, um, that's, it's important because the XFL is supposed to be, like, at the very least, like, I, I always think about this. You know the fucking Sky Cam? Yeah. It came from the XFL originally. That's true. That's true. Like the old one. Yeah. No, I know what you're so, talking about. So the best thing this can league can do in terms of rules and officiating is show that these things work mm-hmm. or find better solutions that the XFL is too stubborn to do and that they have to implement. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. So that's the best thing I could do with the rules of the officiating is as much as we want the, the XFL to be successful, the NFL product is the biggest football product available. Yeah. And the best thing the XFL can do in this regard is is be a testing ground for these things for the NFL. Yeah. So, but anyway, it was a good show, I think. Um, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter at XFL Extra Point. Send us questions on Twitter. Send us questions in the DMs. Slide in my DMs. Tell me I look cute. Um, <laughs> they don't know what you look like, dog. <laughs> well, you know, I think they could they could backtrack or they could they could trace our like personal accounts probably through there somewhat. I mean, they can definitely trace mine because I replied to one of the. You did. One of I, your I posts. never have. Yeah. See, you're staying in the dark. Yeah. You're moving. You're a real G that moves in silence like lasagna. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> send send uh, send send questions to our email to extrapointcontact at gmail dot com uh, about anything. It. I looked through anything it at all. Okay, well send us stuff. Send it to our DMs too, which we already went over. Yeah. We are we want stuff to talk about, so send us stuff. It can be anything. If you want more NFL angry time, <laughs> put it there. Um, but. Anyway, you know what I'm now looking forward to? Half looking forward to, half not? What? Uh, that we have to do another hour and 40 minute draft thing. I actually <laughs> will like that a lot if that happens. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. I really enjoyed the last time we did that. And it'll be better this time because it'll be way better audio for me. So I know. I was going to say that. I, I honestly <laughs> think those first two episodes were like our best content. Yeah. But they and were like I had shitty. The shittest audio. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, maybe we'll get another try at it where we'll have better audio and better, um, you know, and we'll be more rehearsed. Yeah. You know, we'll, like, we, we, we'll we, have been doing we, this we've done this a, a few, what, it's been a month now, huh? Really? Wow. Jeez. Four episodes? Yes. So it's been a month, and we've grown, and we really appreciate y'all, like, supporting us, all the XFL community people who retweet our stuff, um... Big shout-out to the LA Wildcats for retweeting our stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. That made me smile. Yeah, that was cool. If you guys didn't know, Thomas was such like a little uh, nerd boy when mm-hmm. we were like, oh, we're going to have a player interview. And Thomas hey, was like, man. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was excited. That's exciting. It was Why cool. Not no, it was definitely cool. That's it was exciting. not something I expected to happen so early on into this podcast. Yes, the, the reception from the community has been fantastic and really can't ask for it to be better at this point. It's been great. So It has been great. And I, it's yeah. like... Who was I? I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and I was like, "Man, like when I was in college, I never like I always wanted to start a podcast." But I was like, "How am I going to juggle school, podcast, and a job?" And like Mm -hmm. now that we've been doing this, I'm like, "Man, we should have just done this." Because yeah, because I mean, we got we have kind of not necessarily a set schedule, but I mean, we record on Sundays. We can record on Saturdays if yeah, editing needs to take a little longer. So I mean, now now when now when the season starts, boy, we're at two episodes a week. Yes, we'll have to figure stuff out there, but I'm I'm confident we'll be able to swing it. It shouldn't be hard. Like the, the, we'd still have our Sunday show. Yeah, as usual. It was just we then at, at a Friday we'd have to record on a Thursday. Yeah. So it should be fine, and we think we've recorded some. We've recorded the little intros for the interview on a Thursday. 
That's right. That was by far, I think that took the most effort, even though it was a five-minute thing. So, Right, right. Um, so. There's a lot of, I didn't save any of those takes, but it'd be funny to have a blooper reel of me fucking up a million times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, this outro has been super long. Yes, um, but that's okay. <laughs> so thanks, guys, for listening. Catch you all next week. Thanks for supporting us for a month and many months to come. Bye-bye. Adios. Let's